So, how are we doing? Good. <laughs> Amen. So, if you have your Bibles, would you like to turn to Mark, Mark chapter 16, verse 15? And he said unto them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every person. God's call. And if you will note that God calls every born again believer to be used by God in witnessing. Everyone has a calling. Everyone. We have a calling. Webster Dictionary states a profession or occupation of spiritual summons, a deep impulse to carry out a mission. Now that comes from Webster Dictionary. Do we know what our calling is? <clears throat> now you may, some have a special calling, that's, that's so true. But our own calling by the Lord Jesus Christ is one for souls. Just think of it now. One for souls. It is important that we allow the calling of the Holy Spirit to permeate our hearts and souls. Because you see, the greatest gift was the gift that Jesus Christ gave. He died on the cross, he rose again, and he said, I will come again. And Christians, Jesus Christ is coming. And that is why it's so important for us to be in the place where the Spirit of God can lead us to someone. I, I recall so vividly is that one of the, the men that I had known for, for some time, but he wasn't a Christian. And he would say to me, Paul, you're not online here. You have to realize that everybody is going to heaven. Everybody. Whether they go to church, whether they read their Bible, whether they pray, everybody is going to heaven. So what I just said to him, I said, listen, why would Christ die on the cross for your sins and for my sins? Why? And he just stood there and stared at me. I says, well... He said, I never thought of that. And you know what? Know something, Christians? God put it in my heart to ask him if he wanted to give his heart to Jesus. And he just stood there and he looked at me. I said, do you want to give your heart to Jesus? And the tears started to come down his cheeks. Christians, we have... A wonderful, wonderful gift. The gift of salvation. And all we need to do is to allow the Spirit of God to take control of our hearts and lives. Excuse me. Now, one of the things that I find when I, this, this, young, this young man, and he said, I didn't know. I didn't know. I said, now you know. And now you have God in your heart. Read your Bible and talk to God every day. And you know, Christians, this is what it's all about, our salvation. Giving honor to the Lord Jesus Christ 
and allowing the Holy Spirit to minister to us, through us, and to us. And therefore, we have this calling. It is so important that you and I allow God to take control of our hearts and lives. God is no respecter of person. You may be rich, you may be poor. You may not have much goods, but one thing is certain that God has called us into his marvelous light. And therefore, we as God's people, it is imperative that we allow God to lead us, to guide us, and again, to talk to us. And this is why we are here this morning. Not very many. That's okay. We're here, and we pray that God will continue to lead his people. Christians, it's so important. We have a gift that is so, so beautiful. It's so powerful. And when we see an unsaved person, God is able to send us to that person or to have that person come to you. I remember so, excuse me, so clearly this person said to me, and I'm not bragging, I'm just stating the fact because this is what generally happens. He said, Paul, I admire you, but I don't believe in Jesus. I said, that's fine. I said, who, do you, who made the heavens? Oh, they were just there. I mean, who created the heavens? Who created the sun? Who created the moon? Who created the animals? And you know, Christians, God is desirous that every born-again believer has the anointing of the Spirit of God upon us. Everyone. We are God's children. And think, if you had a child, and that child was going to be gobbled up by a lion or by whatever, you will go to the defense of that child. And God has gone to our defense. We were born in sin, shaped in iniquity, and the power of God fell upon the Lord Jesus Christ when he says, It is finished! And he gave up the ghost. And you and I were free from sin. We're free. Thank God we're free. But let us remember, there are many people out there that need Jesus. That need Jesus. It is so prudent that when we get up in the morning, we need to pray, God, send me to someone or send someone to me. Because you see, Christians, Jesus is coming soon. Jesus is coming soon. Read, listen to the news, and you will know this world is in bad shape. But God says, I will come again. Jesus is coming again. And we know that he's coming again. And therefore, it's so imperative that you and I make ourselves ready. When we get up in the morning and we go to our place of work or wherever. But before we do, let us have time with the Lord. Give God his rightful place. And Christians, I want to say this. When I was sitting in the office this morning and looking out the window and thinking, God, you're so wonderful. You are so wonderful. So I went and opened up the back door of my office and just went outside and I looked. It was cloudy. And yet there were people driving. There were people walking. And I'm thinking, God, we 
have the answer. Talk to people. I'm serious. Talk to people about our situation, our world situation, and they will say, I don't know what's coming. I don't know what's coming, but it is horrible. It's scary. Christians, Jesus is coming. Excuse me. He's coming again. And there are times when the enemy comes in like a lion. And I'm going to say this once again. Remember, Christians, we have the power of the Holy Spirit resonating within our hearts. Therefore, we are more than conquerors through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Christians, it's wonderful. We do not walk alone. We wake up in the morning and the Spirit of God is with us. Wherever we go, the Spirit of God is with us. Whatever we do, the Spirit of God is with us. Why? It's because He loves you and I and He says, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. You are my children. And we stand amazed at the power of the Almighty God. Jesus is the answer. He's the answer, Christians. Do not fear. Do not fear. There's someone in this, this building this morning. You are fearful. I want you to know that God will set you free if you ask him. I will not call upon you. But all you have to do is to ask Jesus to come into your heart and to give you peace and to give you hope. That's all you have to do, people. And therefore, this individual, God loves you. He loves you. He loves you very much. Give him your heart. Give him your heart. I'm going to pray. Father in heaven, thank you for your love. Thank you, Lord, for dying on the cross for us. We were destined for hell. But Lord, you came to set the captives free. And we are free this morning. Not in our own strength, but in your strength, in your power, and in your love. Oh God, forgive us for our shortcomings, but help us, dear Father, to live the life that is absolutely pleasing to you. And we ask this in your precious and holy name. Amen. Amen.